Chapter 5 is our new chapter. It's a chapter on polynomials. I'll talk really briefly right now about what a polynomial is. A polynomial is any expression or function that has only whole number powers. So if your powers are whole numbers, meaning they're not negative, we like them to come in standard form. All these have whole number powers. 5 is a whole number, 2 is a whole number, 3 is a whole number, and this is x to the first. That's a whole number. It doesn't matter if the coefficients are radical or a decimal or something messy. You just can't have powers on the bottoms of fractions, powers that have decimals, or powers that have negative numbers. So we're going to be talking about polynomials. Today we'll be dividing them, dividing polynomials a few different ways. Later on we'll talk more about what polynomials are and how they're useful. I'm going to divide this by a monomial. Dividing by a not monomial, monomial means a single term, one number on the bottom. Dividing by a monomial is very straightforward. You can think of this as being a bunch of separate fractions. I split this up into a whole bunch of different little fractions, and then I just divide all the fractions. So 12x to the seventh divided by negative 4x squared becomes negative 3x to the fifth. The powers subtract. Negative 8x to the sixth minus 4x squared becomes positive 2x to the fourth. Then this will be minus 3 over 2x squared minus 5 over 4x plus 1, because this divides to just 1. They cancel each other, but they don't go away. They just divide to 1. This is now a polynomial in standard form. Standard form meaning the powers are coming in decreasing order. x to the fifth, fourth, second, first. That's x to the first. And this is like x to the 0, because 2 minus 2 is 0. So just another quick example. This one has multiple variables on the bottom, but that's OK. I'm just going to divide and cancel. So 32 divided by 4 is 8, and the powers on the x's drop by 2, and the powers on the y's drop by 1, so the y's are gone entirely. Then we're going to divide these two by each other. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. There's 1x and 1y left over. Now I'm dividing these two. 10 divided by 4 is 5 over 2, and that's positive, and I'm left with no variables. And then this one, when I do this division, something kind of interesting happens here. This becomes negative 5 over 4. I still have an x left on the bottom because there is 1x on top and 2x's on the bottom. So I'm left with an x left on the bottom and then a y squared on top. So this is technically right now not a polynomial. That's fine. We can still do the division. We just didn't divide a polynomial into a polynomial. So here was a polynomial on top. Here was a polynomial on the bottom. The division of the two did not leave us with a polynomial because of this x down here. This one up here, however, was still a polynomial. Let's talk about long division. We'll do polynomial long division, but first I want to remind you of how to do regular long division. And I apologize, I'm going to have to jump from a white background to a green or black background. I'm doing 14 into 12,870. And that sets up like this over here. 14 can't go into 12, it goes into 128, ugh, I think, seven times? Is that eight times? I think it's eight times. Let's try eight. You can barely see that. 8 times 4 is 32, so a 2 goes here and a 3 goes here. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 3 is 11. I subtract these, and I get 16. Okay, now we can see it better. 16 is bigger than 14, which means this actually could have gone in 9 times instead of 8 times. 9 times 4 is 36, so 6 goes here, 3 goes here. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 3 is 12. I subtract these, I get 2. That's better. 2 is less than 14. We want that. Now we drop down this 7. 2 goes into, oh, sorry, 14 into 27 one time. 1 times 14 is 14. I'm doing this to remind you of how long division works. It's all about columns and place value and seeing what can go into what. Now I know that 14 went into 128 nine times, so 14 will go into this 130 nine times. And I know that 9 times 14 is 126 because I've already done that. And at this point, we used to, and by used to I mean like when you learned this, you would often put a point zero and drop down a zero and keep going. 14 goes into 43 two times. However, if you remember from grade school, whenever you first learned how to do this long division, instead of dropping down a zero, we could just say this has a remainder of four. So this would be 919 with a remainder of four. Remember remainders? 
Well, the thing you probably didn't discuss about remainders back in grade school is they can actually give you the remaining fraction. This is 919th and 919 and 4 fourteenths. Take your remainder and put it over the thing you were dividing by, 4 fourteenths, which is really 2 sevenths. So yes, we can do remainder 4, or we can do the decimal expansion, but we can also think of this as a fraction. It's the whatever's left over being divided by whatever we're dividing by. And that last way of doing it is really helpful when you do polynomial long division. So we're going to follow the same steps here that we followed before, only it feels a lot more complicated. It's actually not crazy insane. You'll see 6x to the third minus 4x squared plus x minus 6. The last one I did very quickly. This one I'll do much slower because this is going to be new for us. I don't worry about the plus 1. I just worry about this 3x right here. The question is, how many times does 3x go into 6x to the third? How many times does 3x go into 6x to the third? Really it's saying 3x times what equals 6x to the third, and that thing is 2x squared. 3x times 2x squared is 6x to the third. So I put a 2x squared here. I match up the powers, x squared over x squared. And just like over here, we did 9 times 14 and wrote that here. I'm going to do 2x squared times 3x plus 1 and put that here. So 2x squared times 1 is 2x squared. 2x squared times 3x is 6x to the third. And I'm subtracting this whole thing. I'm subtracting all of that, just like how over here we subtract all of it. The subtraction is going to be the step that you mess up, because you're going to be fine subtracting these two. You know 6x to the third minus 6x to the third is 0. That's not going to be a problem. But you're going to forget to do negative 4x squared minus 2x squared. This should become negative 6x squared. Most of you are just going to add those because the subtraction sign is way out over here and you forget about it. So what I really recommend you do is you take that subtraction sign and you distribute it to all of these things. Get rid of the parentheses and make it negative 6x to the third minus 2x squared. Subtract. I'll talk about that again on the next example. Negative 6x squared is the next thing that we're going to check. So I drop down this plus x, and now I want to see how many times can 3x go into negative 6x squared. 3x goes into negative 6x squared negative 2x times. Negative 2x times 3x is negative 6x squared. Negative 2x times 1 is negative 2x. I'm going to subtract these. And when I say subtract, what I really mean is change the signs. It's like I'm distributing that negative. So I didn't really show that very well, but what's happening is I'm going to be subtracting all of this. So instead of trying to subtract it and keep track of the subtraction, instead I'm going to switch all the signs. Make this a plus, make this a plus, put it together. These become 0, that's the point. x plus 2x is 3x. OK, last one. I'm going to drop down this minus 6. 3x goes into 3x one time. I just check this number here, that term, to this term here. 3x goes into 3x one time. So I do the multiplication. 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times 1 is 1. I'm subtracting this, so I'm going to switch all the signs, make that a minus and make that a minus. I'm left with negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. Since I have nothing left to drop down, I'm going to say that my quotient, the result, is 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 7 over 3x plus 1. I put this over this. Just like how here, I put this 4 over this 14. This is the division. So the division of 6x to the third minus 4x squared plus x minus 6 divided by 3x plus 1 gives me this. That is polynomial long division. Again, it seems kind of complicated, but you're just following these steps that you followed here. You're just doing it over and over again with polynomials and terms instead of just plain numbers. So I'm going to do two more examples, and you can kind of gauge yourself how much of this you need, but at least see how this first one starts before you skip ahead. 
On the outside, I have 2x minus 4. On the inside, I'll have 6x to the third minus 16x squared plus 0x minus 16. And this 0x is so important. Notice how this went x to the third, x to the second, and then no x's. It skipped the x to the first term. I have to have that 0x there as a placeholder for the x to the first term. Now I'm going to do this one faster, but I'll try and color code it to make it um, easier to follow. So we'll start with some green. 2x goes into 6x to the third, 3x squared times. Holy cow, that's thick. 3x squared times 2x is 6x to the third. 3x squared times negative 4 is negative 12x squared. I'm going to be subtracting these, so I switch these signs. And this becomes um, 4x squared. And I'll write that in a different color now. And I'll drop down the 0x. 2x goes into 4x squared 2x times. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. I'm going to subtract all of this, so I switch that sign and switch that sign, and that gives me 8x, which I'll switch to another color now. Drop down to minus 16. 2x goes into 8x 4 times. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. I'm going to subtract these, which means the signs switch, and I end up with just a 0. That's really nice. That means I have no remainders of any sort, no fraction behind. So I get 3x squared plus 2x plus 4. That is the quotient. That is what this comes out to. This also means if I took this and multiplied it by this, I would get this because that's what division tells you. <laughs> okay, One more just for the sake of examples. Again, if you feel like you're doing good with this and don't need to see it again, that's up to you. Something special happens here, though. There's a 0x here. So I'm going to write 2x squared plus 0x plus 4 going into 2x to the 4th plus 6x to the 3rd plus 2x squared plus 12x minus 8. Why would I do this to myself? It's so long. I'm doing it to myself so you can see it. So you really should be thanking me for the sacrifices I'm doing up here and not moaning about the fact that you'll have to be doing problems like this yourself. Although not that many that are this long, I don't think. Let's start with pink. 2x squared goes into 2x to the 4th 2x squared times. 2x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the 4th. 2x squared times 0x is 0x to the third, and 2x squared times 4 is 8x squared. Subtract all this, so I switch all the signs. And that gives me 6x to the third minus 6x squared, and then I drop down to 12x. Should have switched colors there, but oh well. Let's jump to green. 2x squared goes into 6x to the third 3x times. 3x times 2x squared is 6x to the third. 3x times 0x is 0x squared. And 3x times 4 is 12x. Whoa, this goes into that perfectly. So I'm going to subtract all of this. Signs all switch, which I'm not showing as well anymore. And I get a whole bunch of zeros. That's kind of sweet. Then I just drop down a negative 8. 2x squared can't go into negative 8. This is my remainder. So this didn't work out so bad. This ended up being 2x squared mi plus 3x minus 8 over 2x squared plus 4. And you can barely see that in that corner. I'll reduce that fraction. So it's 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared plus 2. There's the division. Okay, that's long division. There's a faster way called synthetic division. And so now you're like, well, if there's a faster way, Gilchrist, why didn't you just show me this in the beginning and stop yelling at me? That is very impolite. But the reason I didn't show this to you at the beginning is because it only works in a special case. If you have linear binomials, meaning the power on the variable is 1, and you have a, a linear binomial. That's the only time this works, but the way that it works is pretty slick. 
I'm going to take these coefficients, 2, 5, 0, 5, negative 14. Remember, I had to have 0 because there's a 0x squared here. Always be on top of that. And then I'm going to put in this little box up here the number negative 3. Why the number negative 3? Because it's always going to be whatever makes this equal 0. So I plug in whatever makes that equal 0 to do this division. Now what happens is I do, I drop down the 2. The first thing you do is just drop down this number. People don't like how that starts. You drop down this number, and then I'm going to multiply this negative 3 by this 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and that goes here. And then these columns, they add. So I'm doing 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So I added those up. Then I multiply. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Add these up. 0 plus 3 is 3. Multiply. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Add those up. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Multiply. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Negative 14 plus 12 is negative 2. So I've gone through that synthetic process. Now, this last number always goes in a box. That's your remainder. And everything falls in from there. So the answer is 2x to the third, the quotient really, 2x to the third minus 1x squared plus 3x minus 4 with a remainder of 2 over x plus 3. Negative 2 over x plus 3. This is the division. This divided by this gives me this. And so you might be wondering, well, how do you know what powers to put on the x? Whatever this power is, drop it by 1. Because you're dividing it by a linear term. You're doing x to the fourth divided by x to the first. So the power is going to drop by 1. So the power drops by 1, and there's your synthetic system. I'll do it one more time. The thing that makes this 0 is negative 1 half. So that goes in that box. Here I'll put 4, negative 2, 1, negative 6. Drop down, multiply. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. Then I add in this column. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Multiply. Negative 1 half times negative 4 is positive 2. Add. 1 plus 2 is 3. Multiply. Negative 1 half times 3 is negative 1.5. Add. Negative 6 minus 1.5 is negative 7.5. That goes in a box. I get 4x squared minus 4x plus 3 with a remainder of 7.5, negative 7.5 over 2x plus 1. Some people don't really like the synthetic division. They just think it's just weird and odd and feels out of place. But it's going to become a lifesaver in just a couple of sections, a couple of videos. So learn it, use it, love it. Until next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful and that you enjoyed it and that it wasn't too painful. Um, if you found it helpful, please share it with a friend. Send him an email and say, hey, this guy's voice isn't awful and he's not always licking his lips. Maybe we can stand it. If you're a teacher and you thought, hey, this wasn't too bad, I should probably stop underselling myself so much. Anyways, if you're a teacher and you want to find the curriculum that I use to go with this, homework problems, quizzes, tests, everything, it's linked down below at Teachers Pay Teachers also. It's pretty incredible. There, I didn't undersell myself that time. Let's just watch until the spirograph finishes. Just a few more bumps. Bump, bump, bump. There we go. Almost there. Man, this is going to feel good. Oh, yeah, that's satisfying. There it is. And now it just kind of overwrites itself just a little bit. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.